hello youtube happy new years and welcome or welcome back to my channel and if you are new thank you so much for clicking on this video and welcome to my journey so in this video i'm gonna turn the comments off because thank god i have had not had no negative comments except for like maybe one but this is not clickbait i'm just not putting this out for views and i'm not putting this out just because just to get attention this actually happened to me and i just feel like it's something that i need to share with everybody it's part of my story and it's really personal to where i am today so if you want to know keep watching also before we start i need to update y'all i know that i told y'all that i sell lashes right or i'm relaunching my lash business my inventory is coming in later this month and meanwhile make sure that you follow this is my lash page. I, yeah, I do not know if it's focusing. My lash styles will be in later this month, so make sure y'all stay tuned. I'll leave my Instagram link below. With all that being said, let's get right to the video. This is the background. I had to turn y'all to a different angle because I ain't got my ring light right now, so yeah. Um, so this refers back to my heartbreak video. If you haven't um, went and watched that video, go click off of this video and go watch that video and tell me what you think and let me know in the comments. I may be turning the comments off for that video because I'm actually turning the comments off for this video. So yeah, this is something that's really personal to me that I just needed to share with everybody because you never know, somebody else could have went through the exact same thing. So to give y'all a mini summary it was you know literally the worst heartbreak of my life i really thought i was gonna marry this person i really thought i could see the rest of my life with this person when i legit say i could see myself being with this person for the rest of my life that i just could not lie about like i know how i feel with that entire situation and <clears throat> Once I finally, okay, so y'all know, y'all know we can really be saving ourselves from heartbreak because we be seeing what be going on when you start talking to somebody and, you know, we see we, they start moving different or they're playing mind games, which was mainly happening to me, you know, so it was just the whole mind control thing and I fell into it because I was so young, I was so naive. When I met him, I was 19 years old and then a few months later, I turned 20 years old. Y'all, I literally spent my birthday with this, with this, I was going to say with this man, but with this boy, I spent my birthday with him. Even though we didn't do anything on my birthday, but the obvious, but um, I spent a lot of time with him and it taught me so much about myself, honestly. But anyway, to <clears throat> fast forward, excuse me, and when I found out that he was talking to somebody else so he had a best friend i don't trust female friends i don't like female friends because why are you why are you spending so much time with someone else if i'm supposed to be your main priority and you know i just go ahead and tell y'all spill the beans or whatever he chose her over me i started telling him that i just i just had a horrible uncomfortable feeling in my body and I was just like, I just don't feel comfortable. And then I started to pick up that it just wasn't something right with that situation with the both of them. Um, I realized that he was a lot closer to her than he made it seem. They both were a lot closer than they made it seem. And he he stuck with that girl, literally stuck with her. Um, and it's crazy because her birthday is in March. My birthday is in April. And he was so excited to go spend time with her on her birthday, even though um, we never went because it was supposed to be like all three of us doing something for her birthday or whatever, right? He just started telling me, oh yeah, she likes to do this, she likes to do that or whatever. But when my birthday came, I realized it wasn't really, it was the same energy, but it was not the same energy. Like it was just on a vibe like, yeah. You know what I'm gonna do for your birthday. Like <laughs> it was that kind of vibe. And he was just like, oh, so, you know, because I remember him telling me something like, he was just like, so, you know, um, if I could have gotten you something for your birthday, I would have. Now, I can't sit here and lie. I played a part in it, too. It was, a, he did do small things for me that I am thankful for. But at the same time, I should have spoken up, like, sooner. And the longer that you wait to speak up on a situation is the harder and more complicated than it has to get when it's really not that complicated. 
So to make the situation clear, I broke up with him the first time was just like i think we went like three four days without talking to each other and then i texted him back again i was just like can we please talk i tried it again it just wasn't it wasn't sitting with me and i was just like look i can't do that he was just like okay whatever and from then i felt like my life kind of did a whole 360 um or close to it 180 and y'all when i say i lost myself I've never lost myself that deeply because you know how like you've been in a relationship before you go through a breakup you feel like oh my gosh I don't know how I'm gonna do this without this person and then after like three four months you straight um and then you be rushing to get into another relationship my situation was just not like that and I think one of the major uh key parts is I mean you know how they say age is nothing but a number but then again, I feel like it has an impact on certain relationships. At the time, I was 19 when I met him. He was already 21. So with me being young, he saw that I was naive. Another thing that I mentioned in the video, I mean, y'all have to go back and watch the video. Like, I was very overly insecure about myself. And it was just a lot going on with myself that I kind of poured into him for. And that's kind of where I went wrong at. I was looking for validation in somebody else. But at the same time, the way that he treated me, I literally never had been treated like that by nobody else. And it caused me to just kind of overlook the whole situation the fact that you know what i'm saying he got kicked out of school and had to let him write a letter of recommendation to come back to school that following semester in the fall was um something i should have considered more just small stuff like that but anyway so y'all the amount of time that i spent with this do i spend with this boy I was spending my life with him. I was investing my entire life into him because now we weren't living together or nothing like that, but we were planning on living together. I believe that following year, so this was 2019, so that following year would have been 2020. And I understood, you know what I'm saying? We all been at our weak points in our life. So you know how like when you're talking to somebody, you try to support that because everybody's story and situation is different. Um, but then I realized I kind of was being taken advantage of, uh, well, I was being taken advantage of because you know when you break up with somebody you know everything that you need to know and some of the stuff you already knew um anyway so be very careful with the amount of time that you spend with not only people that you're dating or someone that you're dating um it can be friends it can be even be family he, when i broke up with him that was yeah, I don't know if the breakup is the worst part or when you are about to break up with somebody. Because you know how, like, you just like, oh my gosh, if this person keeps doing this, 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 and that, I don't know if I'm going to be able to stay with them because it don't seem like they're ever going to change. And you come to the conclusion, oh my gosh, they're not going to change. But in the back of your mind, you just like, I could have saved myself from this. I really could have. So at the same time, who else I'm going to be mad at? I can't just blame the other person. That's literally how I was feeling. Um, like I said at the time, I was 19 years old. I turned 20 when I was with him. And I was in college part-time. The following, well, going into the fall semester, not too long after we broke up, because we broke up in July. Going into the fall semester is when I became full-time in college. So I was back and forth, full-time and part-time. Started going over to his house and stuff like that. Uh, he still, he stayed with his aunt at the time. And I was over there all the time. It was me, it was him, some of his family, me and some of his family would smoke. And we just laugh and we just talk about life. But I will say, even though that was one of the lowest moments in my life, it was one of the highest moments in my life at the same time. Because I will say that is a time period that I really enjoyed myself. And I'm kind of glad that it happened because it was something I feel like that needed to happen. And I was just so, oh my gosh, I feel like I found the right person. He's, you know, y'all, we literally we would pray before we would eat. Uh, I remember we went on our first date. We went on our date and we prayed like at the table. And I was just like, oh my God, he prays. And, um, you know, he, he believes in God. You know, all this little small stuff. And I was just like, oh my gosh, he's literally focused what probably got me the most was like the fact that he was focused on school and what he had to do for himself with him being a grown man um and he wasn't he wasn't becoming a product of his environment that wasn't his goal to be a product of his environment 
but again a lot of stuff small things that i overlook because it's the small things so when i broke up with them we went from like i said like you know you know how you go from like two three days a week to like a whole week spending a whole week with somebody so that's how it was every single day we was together and when i had to make that decision it hurt but it was definitely worth it but during the process and i would be lying to y'all if i said i am 100 percent healed i say i'm about 97 percent i really would say i can honestly say about 97 percent healed when i when i left i did come back i ain't gonna lie this is how i came back uh around like june or july of 2020 I somehow in my mind I remembered literally remembered his snapchat username because I had blocked him on snapchat and I literally remem remembered it word for word and I added him and I was trying to go around everything I was trying to go around everything and I shouldn't have been talking to him I really shouldn't have but he um he was just like oh no nah, i'm out of town right now because i asked him do you want to smoke but what i really wanted to do was just sit down and talk to him because it was just i kept craving closure i still kept craving closure because i just wanted him to see what he had did to me i was just trying to make him understand you know how much you hurt me i don't think you, you care but like do you really know how much you hurt me because you don't and i was just trying to make him see you really hurt me and i kept getting the vibe oh, i don't care i don't care i don't see nothing i did wrong and you the one stayed anyway you one was still here with me so anyway going back to my suicidal part um i always would crave to have a boyfriend because the way my family have made me feel throughout my life the way people that i used to think were friends have made me feel about myself i used to be bullied all the time i used to be called names my family were my first bullies and my family were my first sexual harassers not abuse but harassment so when you i feel like a lot of it starts at home when you start dealing with stuff as a child that still affects you when you get older you kind of look for people you look into people to help you feel better about yourself instead of kind of digging deeper into yourself but i feel like that comes with just getting older and just timing uh so i really did not see how i was going to continue my life with him because without him because we literally talked about getting married we literally talked about vacations because the same exact month that I broke up with him was the same month we were supposed to be taking a trip to the mountains and then I was just like oh my gosh um who is he gonna be with um and for a long time I was in stalker mode and uh again my family was still giving me a hard time and I was still going through my little small things in my personal life and I felt, felt like he was just like he was just my getaway space he was my getaway space I could talk to him we could laugh um he bought me a rose it's just it was just small things that yeah so I didn't want to go to school I didn't want to go to class I didn't want to work a job I didn't want to get up and do laundry I didn't want to clean I didn't want to do anything when I say I just I just wanted to lay in my bed is all I wanted to do and just constantly sleep or and just lay there I couldn't even I could barely listen to the radio anymore because every single song every single song just reminded me of him i couldn't barely watch tv because everything that came on was like a drama romance and stuff like that and then on top of that kind of mentioned this in my last video i feel like with a lot of relationships that i've been in that it was more of the person now i play a part in it too because you know what i'm saying i could have left but i didn't but I feel like within a lot of relationships I've been in was a full insecurity what well, was my in were based off of my insecurities because 
I feel like when a guy can sense that you're very insecure about yourself, excuse me, or about something in your life, they're gonna take advantage of that. I feel like the fact that I've been like big my whole life and not really been recognized like I thought I should have, I really felt like he played on that. Um, it's just that vibe, like when it comes to outside being with your friends, you all for that, especially your best friend. Uh, but me, it's just like, I got tired of being behind closed doors. I feel like you was having me behind closed doors. And it's just like, yeah, if we would've stayed together, we'd just been like, oh, come up to the school and chill. But let's just say that I did, I would've been taking advantage in that situation too. Like, <clears throat> so yeah, and I just didn't want to do nothing. I really didn't. I didn't want to live life no more. I went over to my best friend's house and me and her sat and talked and I cried. And that was like my very first time crying like in front of her. And she was, she even told me, she was like, I've seen you hurt, but I've never, ever, ever seen you that hurt. Cause she was just like, even though you weren't crying as much, she was just like, I could just feel it. I could just feel that you were hurt. And then, you know, when me and him, we got into like a little argument or disagreement and I had sent her a screenshot telling her what was going on. And he was just like, um, I was like, sent him the screenshot. And basically the screenshot was saying, girl, how do you feel about this? Because he was, cause I was, cause I asked him in the text message, I was just like, how, I think I was like said something like how am I gonna trust you now or how am how was this or how was that he was like just watch and see that's how you're gonna know and then my best friend she was like girl I don't know how I feel about that message I was like girl I don't know either when I say I lost my soul it felt like I was walking and it was just like my soul was just dragging behind me like I was all I was doing was carrying my weight is all it felt like I didn't even feel like a person anymore because I got to the point where so I was just like well who, who gonna love me who gonna take me seriously? Who not finna overlook me? Who not finna hide me before a behind four walls? Who's not finna do all this? Like, cause this had been an insecurity that I had been dealing with my whole life. And um, it, it bothers me. And he played on that, obviously. So I got to a point, and mind you, this was not my first time being suicidal. I was also suicidal in high school, mainly because of the bullying but yeah i was suicidal back then too and i was just like you know i just want to end all this i just don't want to deal with this no more like my best friend she kept me up and then my few other friends they kept me up and going um she was like girl you got so much to accomplish and you have so many good things ahead of you why are you she was just like don't do that right now you know what i'm saying don't well don't do that period um the song i used to have Elevators by Blue and PNB Rock on repeat. I used to have myself by Lit and Green on repeat because honestly, though, and So Sick by Neo because those were honestly the only three songs that I could really listen to. Like, honestly, those were the only three I could really listen to, even though they're sad songs and they would make me cry. With my personal life, I hadn't uh, got to where I wanted to be. I mean, I still was really, really young, so I was still trying to figure everything out. Um, it was just a lot and I was just like I can't even explain the feeling I don't want to feel like I'm repeating myself but when it gets to that point to where you feel like you want to take your life because of what somebody else did to you um, so you just kind of got to take it as a lesson um, a lesson and a blessing a lesson and a blessing um, I don't want to get too deep into suicide because I feel like even though this is a personal video, it's a very deep topic that um, I feel like I just can't play around with. Um, and then another thought that I was thinking, I was just like, yeah, he definitely going to regret this now um, because it was just like, it, I can't explain the feeling. I really can't. I, I became super attached is the thing. I became super attached and I had a uh, a soul tie. That's what it is. That's what it is. I had a soul tie. Um, and soul ties are real. If you don't believe me, they don't believe me. But they're real. Yeah, they're real. So, um, it's true for all my ladies out there, young women young bosses, young queens, young princesses, whatever. 
soul ties are real because every time you even every time you kiss somebody every time you kiss somebody every time y'all do what y'all do you literally are transferring emotions and some people do have demons so and some people are not all pure spirited some people really are don't have good intentions i don't want to say all are mean or whatever but they don't have good intentions transferring all that energy back and forth between you and him and like if you're in a relationship right now like i've been single for about eight to nine months now but if you're in a relationship uh well from my uh single for about eight or nine months now because after he after the exit i'm talking about now i was in another relationship about a year and a half later um i'll speak on that another time you're in a relationship now just just be just be mindful of that and make sure that you're getting in return what you're giving um now i'm not saying necessarily be desperate do things from your heart but at the same time don't pour too much into someone that is not pouring into you um because they're they just end up using that as leverage it's just what it really is and you really gotta fix yourself which starts with yourself uh it's crazy i didn't i never really thought i'd be telling this story but i feel like somebody needs to hear it um and like i said on top of that i was being bullied now like i said when i got to high school it was not as bad the bullying was not as bad but it was still there I was bullied um even teachers would bully me i don't know if i ever mentioned any y'all teachers some teachers would kind of make fun of me or at me or whatever and my family like i said they were the first and just people in general on top of that the sexual harassment i'll probably do that in another video the sexual harassment was just it just got to be too much um it just really got to be too much so i feel like when i would date another person i would just look for them to just give me everything and more just give me oh my gosh come do everything that have made me feel insecure my whole life if that makes sense so i feel like that's what you look for in another person when you are not really set full boundaries with yourself also forgot to mention that y'all i would have nightmares and i literally would be paranoid when i say okay so it was a type of nightmare you know we all had them dreams to where we just thinking that we're back with the other person um that we were talking to and then it's just like okay it's just my mind messing with me but it's really what you want to happen because it's what you want to happen but then when you finally accept that look unless this person you know decides to be the bigger person and change their ways because you know you've done all that you can do you know what i'm saying you gotta you know you gotta keep pushing you know what i'm saying you gotta keep pushing I don't like saying moving on because you can't just you don't just move on like that like everybody makes it seem and i would be paranoid to the point everywhere that i went i would see cars that look just like his and i'm like wait is that him and it wouldn't be him I would drive to work crying i would leave work crying sometimes i would be at work crying because you know some of the jobs that i was working i didn't like at the time so that put pressure on me um oh i forgot to mention sometimes i would be picked on at work as well kind of picked at at work um depending on where and who i was working with at the time and i also um wasn't even trying to be healthy like uh just constantly spending my money on food and i'm just like uh still back and forth with school dealing with personal issues and all that i just got so immune to doing everything with him every small thing i was like come on babe come on babe let's do this let's do that i got errands to run i got this to do i got that to do um like i said i invested in my life and the fact that i invested my life um into him is what made me feel the way i felt about it but any of y'all that's out there going through that you're not alone even if, if it's been 2019 this would have been three years ago well february would have made three years because we started talking february the very end of february uh 2019 
you're not alone just take it day by day and pray about it definitely pray about it even on your hardest days pray about it it's not just something that you can overlook and move on to like everybody else thinks because when you start get that small feeling of being lucky with somebody um and like i said you kind of overlook the obvious things and you just like you see so much difference in this person that you've never seen in nobody else before uh you're gonna get through it definitely sit down take you a little journal take you a little journal or two and write down how you feeling pray about it and literally just take it day by day but don't ever let a guy get you down because at the end of the day girl if we want to be honest god stress you out not all guys because i've seen girls that i can tell they're in happy pure happy and healthy relationships but most of these guys they playing with you they're not gonna play with me no more <laughs> so what i have been telling myself lately and what you have to tell yourself you know when you need to do a bunch of inner work with yourself um before you kind of start looking into other people so what you need to be telling yourself is that look girl i need a maid and not even on no games, because I ain't got time for games. Not even on nothing like that. You just, in your mind, you just need to be like, you know what I'm saying? When you present yourself to the public or to the world or whatever the case is, you need to have these guys just being like, bad. She is bad, but I can't have her. I cannot have her, because I can just tell by her demeanor, by her personality, she's unavailable. So I just need to go ahead and move on to the next one, because it's no need in messing with that one, because she ain't about it. <laughs> she is not about it because she because she um because she on her stuff because she is on her own little journey she doing her own thing so i'm trying to decide if i'm doing a part two like i said youtube is just like really sensitive about stuff like this but it's something that somebody needs to hear um it's just something that somebody needs to hear that's just not talked about like that and yeah y'all well thank y'all so much for tuning back in and make sure you subscribe and stay tuned y'all y'all subscribe and make sure you like and make sure you comment and make sure you share and i will see y'all in the next video